Okay, so I imagine by now you probably have seen the uh, ArtStation course that I put up for the uh, Rocks and Grass. Um, it's got six different scenes in it, this being one of them. Uh, this was meant to be a, uh, an extra scene, so it doesn't come with videos of its own explaining uh, every single node in it. Uh, it was just something literally at the last minute where I, I had built it and I thought, you know, I'm just going to add this and uh, give a little bonus. So I figured in this video I would break down one relevant portion, which is the tree system that I put in place here. And this is because, uh, number one, um, it's nice to get kind of like the, uh, the mentality behind it for those of you that uh, do now own this particular tour file. Um, and also for anybody that you know, what has been waiting for the arboreal node and the arboreal node we're, we're hoping it's going to be coming soon. Um, I don't know exactly when it's going to drop and you'd have to be on the team to know that. But I assume that they're going to be putting it out soon, which is going to make this process pretty much, um, you know, moot. So I figured, you know, why not? While we're waiting, you should all be able to, to add some fake trees. And besides, you know, when you go into the final engine, you're going to remove these anyways and replace them. But what this can provide you with is, you know, seeing how your uh, map may lay out. And you can also use this for the purposes of, you know, controlling the layout of trees when you take them into an engine like Unreal or Maya using something like MASH. You know, you want to have uh, a, a map and see how that's going to look. So um, putting this together is really just, uh, let's find the actual file layer. There we go. I'm going to press G and then we'll look at the trees by themselves. And maybe I'm just going to turn off the 2D view. And so essentially they're just a uh, Voronoi with a little bit of Perlin. So I'm going to break this down. First off, we have our good friend Voronoi. And then we uh, tried an emphasis on try to see if terracing would do anything interesting. Uh, it's possible that at a much higher resolution than 2K, say 4K or 8K, you might see like the little shelving that might give them sort of that Christmas tree look. But alas, it didn't, did not do anything really here. So um, it changes the shape. A couple of them get taller and a couple of them get shorter, which is something. But you know, wasn't uh, wasn't exactly what I was expecting. Uh, we have an offset, which I'm going to explain in a moment. <clears throat> and then uh, I did a displace. Now I have a better way of doing this now that uh, I'm going to show you in just a moment. And then I did a shatter. Give it a second to respond there, okay? To create little uh, areas where I could, these end up looking kind of like bushes, a little bit or smaller trees, but the shatter gives you sort of random locations that uh, break up and you can change the seed and get different kind of break up and see how you like that. Then I did a nice little clamp to kind of um, emphasize some of those breakups. So some thinner areas and some big copses here. And I thought that was looking a little bit better. Um, it also gives a little bit more spacing between the individual trees because it cuts off the bases of them. Um, for the trees going in between, I have a nice little purlin here that I did a blur. And then I did an extract using subtract here. And doing this gives me a nice little scatter of what might be sort of deciduous. So you have, you know, your conifers here, you have some deciduous and um, I could mask it out further using that area so that it wouldn't like blend in between. But um, I did a sharpen on this to really make those little corners show up and then using shaper to make them bulge a little bit more. So the, uh, using the Sharpen really helps make sure that the, the shapes make their way through to the final part. And so then we're just taking this and merging it with this. 
and I'm just setting it to max. So it doesn't influence anything else other than the areas where they kind of peek through. And so it ends up looking like a mixture of a bunch of different trees. Now, of course, naturally, I'm going to do a soil off that in order to get, you know, the, uh, the shape off of it. But ultimately, the soil uh, might not provide me with nearly as much textural information as I need. I'm actually using this more as a way to shadow the bases. So um, if you see in here, you can see that there is like a darkness around the edges. And so that's giving me sort of like an... Um, an ambient occlusion kind of idea. We can't have shadows kind of casting under the trees because they don't have a base that's kind of raised. You can't do that in height maps. So the closest uh, approximation that we can do is adding a little bit of the soil map here to try and uh, just darken the bases just a little bit more. Um, instead, we're taking our Voronoi now, our Vorne kind of visited in this sort of grayscale mode. Uh, you can see it's got a nice little pattern to it. If we take a look at this, see that I'm using a uh, 100 scale um, off of a 54, and I'm using uh, N type. So that's giving me this kind of uh, breakup. And I'm using that to run this 124, which gives me little bits of greens and some grays and some darker values and uh, warm colors. And then I have this, which is super vibrant, perhaps excessively so. We're looking at like highlighter green in here, along with some various darker values. So this is way too intense, but when I combine the two of them together, I get a nice kind of uh, warm blend that feels a little bit natural. And then adding that darkness underneath with the soil, you can see it just adds a slight shadow on there. So it doesn't do anything to the top of them, but just around the base, it just darkens it a little bit. Now, normally speaking, I wouldn't mix black uh, directly in with colors. It usually kills the colors. More often I'll use something like this where I'll do like a gamma or uh, other adjustment to the color so that we maintain some of the saturation. Because this, uh, the darker something gets, the less saturation you, you get. So you might want to boost the saturation to get that to work. But um, in this particular case, it wasn't a big difference. So uh, it's not something like you're really going to notice. So it's just a little bit of darkness at the base to add some additional shadowing. It's very subtle. Um, we're then uh, taking from over here, we've got uh, that mask essentially, which is, let's see if we can go through the 2D view. So um, the darker area is going to allow the other one to come through. Um, I could probably have cleaned up that mask a little bit further. Um, something that also might have been potentially useful is um, maybe doing like a um, aperture could, could break something up. That could be also useful in there just to get a little bit of a cleaner mask around the edges, but uh, that's not bad. So we're blending with We have a, another muted green set, so it's not super strong. And that's where that takes that. So it takes it from this still a little bit rich coloring to something just a little bit, um, a little bit different. And that's that, uh, that's that blend. So you can see that. Um, we do a color adjustment here just to remove a little bit extra color and plug that back in for the final. And I found that this blended better with the, uh, the train that I had and the colors that I had in the train versus um, what I had here which was a bit richer and maybe a bit too saturated. So if I'd add more saturation, more color, uh, warmer tones and whatnot, this is more like 
almost the golden hour kind of coloration, um, that might have worked. So uh, in adjustment to the scene, and this is one of the things that you may have to kind of play with, is that you may have to tone things down in order to make them match better. So um, these may seem much more muted, but uh, it made better sense with the final train. And then I just uh, punched up the, um, the saturation a little bit because I decided to bring some more back. So that's how that works. Let's break down another way of kind of doing these arboreal pieces. So we're going to take a Voronoi, and you can see the mentality from you know the ground up. And we're just going to go ahead and scale that. We're going to take the warp all the way down. We're going to go in here and let's do, I don't know, let's try 20 by 20. I'll get those shorter. Something like that. And we're going to take those and we can go into the S type. And the S type has a flat base. So they stand more like individuals. So this is kind of cool. I mean, we got a bunch of different shapes in here, but some of them are still, even though the warp has been turned off, they're kind of warped in their form, which is not necessarily what we want. This is coming from the jitter. So as we change the jitter, you'll get them more and more uniform in shape. And as we get more and more close, that uniformity in shape starts to be maybe a bit excessive because now there are clean rows. Like this is a Christmas tree farm, right? You know, everything's nice and clean and tidy and that's not necessarily what we want. So if we go too much on the jitter, then we do get some like bigger ones and smaller ones, but they're kind of warped. Uh, so instead, I have a different idea. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this and I'm going to duplicate it. So just uh, control D to duplicate and we're going to convert that mode so it's using exact same seed meaning it's going to match up exactly and we're going to grab ourselves an n type now the n type has all this height variation so that's cool um, we're going to take an auto level and that's also going to be useful and now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and add that to it, which is why I didn't auto level it at first. That's just going to give us some of those varying heights and we can determine you know, how much we want. We can clip the, uh, the base of them later, but you can determine if you want a lot of height variation or not. That looks like there's variation going on there. And then we're going to do a displace. Wait a second for that to respond. Uh, okay, and so with the displace, we're getting, you know, some shifting there and it's warping these things. I don't really want it to warp it. I mean, if I go and use even like rugged, which gives, you know, a more powerful kind of push, the variation you're you're now deforming a lot of those things as well you're getting these big gaps in here and you can see the ripples it doesn't look right and if we even change the scale of that and bring it down you know so that the the noise is like more chaotic still all we're seeing is ripples and it will only get it worse if we were to iterate on that you know and so on and so forth so then we're going to end up with streaks and you know, it just, it doesn't ever get better. So we're going to reset these things. There we go. And back to standard. And instead, we're going to see why we used 
this type of Voronoi and why we're keeping the exact same seed. Number one, the seed means that individual trees will be lifted up, not half of a tree and the other half of the tree will be left behind. Uh, this also means that this will move each individual tree by itself. So whatever tree is sitting on top of here will shift this amount to the right. So by taking this and then plugging it in, let's try that again. Taking this and plugging it in, we're now gonna get shifting of them. And that gives us our more chaotic appearance to the layout of the trees without actually warping the trees. So this is great for you know uh, pushing a lot of different things around. And in this particular case, it's perfect for this um, idea that we have here. Not only that, but if we come over here to our sat maps and then plug that into our uh, maximum version here, that gives us variation per tree. So every tree will have a different color based on this color range, and that will be per, per tree, which is again exactly what you want. So there you go. There is your very own arboreal node right here, and then you can do whatever else you would like to it. Hope you found some use from this, and I'll see you in the next video.